Hello people. Welcome to another video, Task 4 of the Deloitte STEM Virtual Internship. It is on cybersecurity. Let us first have an overview. Dykebo Industrials faces a production problem causing assembly line stoppage. A news publication has exposed sensitive private information about the issue. Supply chains dependent on Dykebo's products are at risk due to the production halt. The client suspects a security breach related to their new status board. Investigation needed to assess and address the potential security breach. Before we jump into the log file, let's revisit the robust security measures in place for Dykebo's dashboard. It's not your everyday web page, it's a private dashboard displaying the health status of nine machines in each of Dykebo's four factories. Telemetry data is collected here. Access is restricted to the client's intranet, and authentication is synced to the internal authentication server. Now, pay attention here, the dashboard is shielded from direct access on the internet. It's like a fortress, with its gates firmly closed to external entities. Now, let's open up the web underscore requests.log file. Let's take a closer look at a sample log entry, keeping in mind the private nature of Dykebo's dashboard. Break it down with me. What's the timestamp telling us? Is it a GET request? What's the API endpoint? Are there specific parameters like factory and machine? Locate the authorization details, often tucked away and understand the server's response. Each element is a clue in our investigation within the intranet. Now notice those blocks of text? Each one represents a unique IP address, and they're organized by time. IP address 192.168.0.50 This is the unique IP address from which the requests are originating. Timestamp, time 2021-06-25T07-23-00.000Z colon colon indicates the date and time of each request. This structure allows us to track the activities of different devices within the intranet. Requested endpoint, request forward slash or slash login specifies the endpoint or page that the device is trying to access. HTTP methods, get or post. After the IP address, you'll see the HTTP method used for the request. This is either GET or POST. These methods indicate the type of action the request is trying to perform. GET, used for requests that retrieve data from the server. POST, used for requests that send data to the server, example, submitting a form. Authorization details, authorized user ID. Then this strings combined with numbers, if present, this provides information about the authorized user. In this case, the user ID is this. HTTP status, status 200, success, or 401, unauthorized, indicates whether the request was successful or encountered an authorization issue. Let us have an interpretation. The log entry begins with an attempt to access the root, forward slash, without authorization, resulting in a 401, unauthorized, status. Subsequently, the user accesses the slash login page, and associated resources like login.css and login.js are successfully loaded. A successful login attempt is recorded with a post request to slash login, and the user is authorized with a specific user ID. Further requests are made to various endpoints, slash index.css, slash index.js, all with a successful status. The user then proceeds to access telemetry data for specific factories and machines, and all these requests are successful. This how you can check manually, for the second device log and you do the same and so on. I'll now skip to the IP address 192.168.0.101, where there are so many unauthorizations. Now we've talked about IP address. This is the IP address. Timestamp, time. Requested endpoint, requests. HTTP methods, get or post. Authorization details, authorized user ID. It is this strings combined with numbers. HTTP status, status 200, success until on the 26th where we have continued authorization issue. 
for 01, unauthorized. Here I want you to recognize automation. Automated requests can occur at precise intervals. Look for consistency in timing between requests. If there's a robot in the system, it often follows a set schedule. Detecting these patterns helps us identify potential malicious activity within this private space. The log provided shows a recurring pattern of HTTP requests to check the status of machines in different factories. Each request is made at an hourly interval, as indicated by the timestamps in the log. Here's the breakdown. Status of the factory at Mayo and Machine. Requests are made at 48 seconds, another request 1 hour and 48 seconds, and another one at 02,00,48 dot, and so on. The interval between each request is 1 hour. In summary, the automation for checking machine status occurs every hour. User IDs matter. User IDs are our breadcrumbs in this private investigation. Find the authorized user ID field. This ID links the activity to a specific user within Dykobo's intranet. If there's suspicious behavior, knowing the user involved is crucial for further investigation within the secure environment. Now let us identify the suspicious user. We identify the most suspicious user by examining user IDs. Based on the provided information, MDB7YD2DP1BFCPondHBQ1Z stands out. Their activity includes a regular login, dashboard browsing, and automated, once-per-hour checks of machine statuses in all four factories with no loaded page resources, a sign of potential non-human activity. Understanding the log entry structure helps us identify the sequence of actions, successful and unsuccessful requests, and the associated user IDs. This knowledge is crucial for spotting irregularities and potential security threats within Dykobo's intranet. Now these are the questions you are supposed to answer. Question 1. Is there a way for a hacker to access Dykobo's manufacturing status dashboard directly from the internet? No, the attacker has no direct access to the status dashboard. Project Scope, which specified that the dashboard would be located in Dykobo's intranet, and the only remote access would be through VPN tunneling. This reinforces the importance of following security protocols and limiting external access to critical systems. Question 2. Looking at the web underscore requests log, what is the user ID with the most suspicious activity? You'll be given choices to choose from. Based on the information provided and what we've just discussed, it appears that the user with the most suspicious activity is MDB7YD2DP1BFCPondHBQ1Z. This user's activity includes a regular login followed by browsing the dashboard. However, it takes a suspicious turn with automated, once-per-hour checks of machine statuses in all four factories. Notably, there are no page resources being loaded during these requests, indicating non-human behavior with precise punctuality. That's a wrap. We have completed all the five tasks of the Deloitte Virtual Internship. You can go ahead and watch them if you haven't already. If you found this video helpful kindly do support me by getting me to 300 subscribers and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Thank you in advance.